Here is a mind-blowing stat. One in four Y Combinator startups are already shipping with 95% AI-generated code. So if you think vibe coding is just for non-technical users building simple applications, think again. These startups building applications in days, not months, and enterprises are racing to catch up. But here is a challenge. Most AI app builders, whether it's Replit, Lovable, or others, sit outside of your core data environment and here where it gets expensive. Double storage costs from duplicated data, operational overhead from managing applications outside of your environment, and security vulnerabilities that bypass all your existing controls. So the real challenge isn't about building an app. It's about building one that connects directly to your data and runs under the same controls as the rest of your enterprise stack. And that's where Databricks comes in. Have you ever tried to wipe code an app on Databricks? And I'm not talking about generating Python code for a notebook or creating a dashboard. I mean, a full stack application with a web front end, a logic layer, and a transactional database, all deeply integrated with your data and AI environment. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to build at startup speed while keeping enterprise grade security using what I call Databricks Vibe Coding Stack. Lakebase as a fully managed Postgres transactional database. Databricks apps as a secure runtime and UI, and your IDE with AI assistance to bring the logic to life. My goal is to show you the end-to-end -end build process, plus share tips for making AI collaboration truly productive. Let me show you exactly what we are building. We are creating a knowledge testing application. It's a perfect first project because it touches every part of the stack. Database reads and writes, stand interaction, and an LLM integration for content generation. So here is the flow. You upload the document, can be technical documentation, policies, or anything else. Then the LLM processes the file, extracts key ideas, and then generates question and answer pairs. Those Q&As are stored in our transactional lake-based database. Then you can use this to test your knowledge and track progress. It's a simple idea, but it's a real stateful application. And it's flexible. You can adapt it for HR onboarding, employee training, or a workshop knowledge checks. This is the kind of app that could replace expensive training platforms. It's a classic three-tier architecture, but everything lives inside your secure Databricks environment. Let's break it down. First, the database layer, Lakebase. No more need for data duplication. Lakebase connects directly to your existing data. It's built for fast transactional workloads and loved by developers for its open source Postgres compatibility. Lakebase is designed to power intelligent applications built on a lake house without the complexity of a traditional database management. It eliminates the need for custom-built complex ETL pipelines to integrate transactional data with analytics and AI ML environment. And what makes it truly stand out? It's architecture that separates storage and compute and offers high throughput, low latency, and reliability with enterprise security features. Next, we have Databricks Apps, our secure serverless runtime for the web and application layer. Apps run on provisioned serverless compute, so you don't have to manage it yourself. You can start quickly with templates, and everything is integrated with Unity Catalog. Authentication, fine-grained permissions, and audit trails are built in. Applications also come with production-ready Git version control and CI-CD pipelines, making it simple to manage and scale. Finally, the logic layer, where the development happens. Here is the key. We are not just asking AI for code. We are practicing context engineering, giving the model the right information in the right format so it can perform effectively. I will be working on Cursor, but the same principles apply in VS Code with the Databricks extension or pretty much any IDE of your choice with AI coding agents. So instead of vague prompts, we will supply targeted context, documentation snippets, clear task outlines, and even provide some sample queries structured in the right order. Think of it less as prompting and more architecting a workflow between you and AI coding agents. That's what makes AI coding productive, consistent, and reliable. Now. Let's build it together. Step one, 
create a lake base instance. Every app needs a database, so let's provision ours. In the Databricks workspace, click Compute on the left navigation pane. Select the lake base Postgres tab and then Create. This brings up the configuration page. First, give your database a name. Next is the instance size. You can see a range of options here. For this demo, the smallest size is more than enough and it helps to keep our costs down. This is not a permanent choice, so you can resize it later. We will leave the other settings as default for now. Hit Create and Databricks provisions a fully managed production-grade Postgres instance. This usually takes a couple minutes. While the database spins up, let's launch the runtime for our app. Head over to Compute, then Apps tab and click Create App. Here we can pick a template to get started faster. For example, the Gradio template is perfect if your app is heavy on data visualization. The Flask template is ideal if you are building a backend with REST API. But today we want something light and flexible. I will choose Streamlit with the basic Hello World template. Give it a name and hit Create. So now we've got our scaffold. Now let's wire things together. We need to explicitly grant our application access to resources and configure permissions. In the App Settings, open the App Resource tab. First, attach our lake base instance from the dropdown. Then let's add an LLM. We need to select an endpoint. You can see the whole list of available models here. Proprietary models from OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, and also powerful open source options like Llama. This flexibility is a huge advantage. I'm going to stick with Cloud for Sonnet. Our app runs under a service principle with explicitly granted permissions to the database and LLM endpoints. All users inherit the service principle access rights, so you can control exactly what the app can access through Unity Catalog Governance. And with that, our infrastructure is done. In just a few clicks, we have a runtime, a UI scaffold, and a connected database with LLM ready to go. Now comes the fun part, actually building the app. Before I write a single prompt, I collect the exact resources I will need. That might be documentation for connecting to Lakebase, a specific Python library documentation for parsing PDFs, or might be some kind of API calls for the LLM. And I do this research and identify resources. Then I provide this information. This grounds the model in real up-to-date information and prevents it from inventing outdated or incorrect code patterns. So if you know you will reference snippet code more than once, then create a file and just paste it directly rather than providing a link. One more important best practice here, limit the scope of your context. I set boundaries in my prompts like use only the libraries provided, don't import extras. Too much irrelevant material only confuses the model. Give it exactly what's needed for the step you are working on. Next. I describe the goal and requirements and ask the model to generate a plan. For example, I am building an employee quiz app. Here is a list of features and documents. Think step by step and draft a to-do plan and save it in my rep. Once the model lays out a to-do, you can review it and edit. That plan becomes your shared blueprint and keeps the agents on track. So the first step is to create the database schema. So I'm going to add this prompt. Based on our application requirements, generate SQL statements to create question and answers tables. And here I'm going to reference documentation from Databricks cookbook. It's a great resource if you are building Databricks apps. Once you have the SQL, open the Databricks SQL editor, click new query, and select the correct database. Here, you will need to replace the placeholder client ID with the application service principle. You will find it in the environment tab of your application. If for some reason this generated SQL fails, don't waste your time copy pasting from ID or other uh, coding agents. Just ask Databricks Assistant to diagnose your error. It will suggest you a fix and then when you get working code, then paste it back to the model so it remembers the correct version. This feedback injection 
keeps the context clean and prevents the model from repeating the same mistakes. Something will always break, and that's fine. The key is to help model to troubleshoot it. Don't just say, fix it. Instead, give it as much context as you can. For example, share logs, error messages, or failing test outputs with the model. The more specific you are, the better the fix. And when something does work, reinforce it with a note like this. This works correctly. Use this version going forward. That way, the model sticks to good code. One last tip here. Protect your progress. Sometimes fixing one bug breaks something else. I always keep a clean branch or backup repo or sometimes just a copy of a file with working code. If things go sideways, I can roll back fast and just keep moving. This workflow turns coding with AI into a real collaboration. You guide it with context, keep it aligned with the plan, and reinforce the working pieces as you go. After a few iterations, you will have a working prototype. Once you get that MVP running, Deployment is very simple. All you need is just this one command and then app will be redeployed. Now we can test the full flow, upload the document, generate questions, save them as a quiz and then practice. And also try to query lake base and see that all your attempts are saved and also all of the generated questions are in database so that you can reuse them. That's a moment when vibe coding really pays off. You got from an idea to a working app in a fraction of time that it would normally take. And as you prepare to share this app with your team, you can set up different authorization options. Our app currently uses service principle permissions, but you can also enable user authorization where each user's existing Unity catalog permissions will automatically apply. For example, if a table limits US users from seeing European data, the app automatically enforces these restrictions. You can see these controls under the user authorization section. So let's recap what we just accomplished. We went from idea to a working app. We used lake base for data, data breaks apps for runtime, powered it with Cloud Sonnet 4, and utilized vibe coding in our favorite ID. But here is the real win. We did this without sacrificing enterprise security or creating data cells. Everything runs inside our existing governance model. And this is just the beginning. You could swap out the starter UI for something more polished or integrate Delta tables so your app generates questions directly from your enterprise data instead of PDFs. Let me know if you'd like to see this as part two. You will find these examples in Databricks cookbook, and I will leave all of these links in the descriptions of this video. And if you build something cool with this tag, please drop a comment. I really would love to see what you create. Thanks for watching and happy vibe coding.